and welcome back to Race Seed. We've got Carl Bush here with Will Wind Disc Brakes with us today. Carl, let's talk about calipers a little bit today. Well, there are two important things about calipers that you have to know to decide what type of caliper you're going to run. One area uh, that you have to be a concern is, is just how big a caliper do you need for how large of a brake pad that you have to carry to make sure you have enough of brake and stopping power to last the length of the race. When you look at these different size calipers, you'll see that they can take substantially different sizes in pad. These are all calipers that you would typically see or could typically see on a dirt late model, asphalt late model, dirt modifieds, and a lot of the cars that get raced all around the country everywhere on a Saturday night. But you see in a caliper of this size where we're going to have a brake pad that's about four inches long with about a half to a five eighths inch overall pad thickness. We get into a larger size caliper like these, we have pads that could be as much as four and three quarter inches long sometimes even longer and up to say even three quarters, seven eighths of an inch thick. It all comes down to how much brake pad you're going to need. A lot of the difference might be, say an example of an asphalt car where you're going to see a lot of heat, a lot of hard braking and longer lap races, you need a bigger pad that can last longer under severe conditions. Now does a larger pad actually uh, run a little cooler because of the extra area? Yes it will. The larger pad takes longer to heat up and therefore it will take longer to wear out and it also will last better in high temperature situations when you're on the brakes hard a lot for a lot of repetitive laps. So that can factor into your choice on selection too then? Absolutely. The other important factor when it comes to what caliper you're going to pick is the piston size of the caliper you're, you're going to use. The piston size is going to determine just how much clamping force that that caliper is going to make. Now that can enter into two areas of decision. One, you have to have enough of clamping force to be able to stop your car by how much pressure you can make from the pedal and master cylinder. And you may also want to run different size pistons at one end of the car to help you set up the static bias in the car. Now Dalton, on your asphalt car, your brake setup on that car, about what range of percentage of brake bias do you normally run on your car? Well, I normally run 70% front and 30% rear and uh, that's when the brake bias is 50-50 right down the center. Okay, okay, so you have a couple of different ways to go about achieving that 70-30 split. One, you can use different size master cylinders for the front versus the rear that'll send different pressures, but the other is by your piston size selection. When you get to the caliper, the pressure that you're gonna send to the caliper is multiplied by the area in square inches of the piston size. So if you have a larger piston caliper, it's going to multiply that pressure higher and create more clamping force as if you have a smaller diameter piston that won't multiply that pressure as much. So if you're sending the same amount of pressure to the calipers, your bigger piston is going to make more clamping force and that can help you give you more brake bias at that end of the car. So typically on your late model, in most asphalt cars, we're going to normally see a caliper with larger pistons on the front than we will on the rear in an effort to help to achieve that bias split that we're looking for. And that's also a method where a team that's restricted to run a tandem master cylinder, they're outputting the same pressure to uh, front end rear, that's where they can start setting the bias on the car, right? Yes, that might be your only choice. If you're using, uh, in, say, in a hobby stock or a street stock to where you're using a factory type master cylinder where both outlets come from one master cylinder, you're going to be sending the same pressure. So you have choices of using items like a proportioning valve to adjust some of that pressure. Nine times out of ten, what you really need are different size calipers from the front to the rear to put some bias into the car. Where on your late model on asphalt, we'll normally see a 70% front brake. If you're racing on dirt, it might just be the opposite to where those cars will often run on a substantially higher percentage of rear brake. And we're talking about this balance and everything too, just for explanation. Um, I mean, that's kind of like, I, would the best way to explain it be that's the net of all the formulas in the entire system? Yeah, that, that's what we talk about sometimes is static balance is the clamping force that's going to be created at the caliper at one end of the car balanced against how much clamping force is going to be created at the opposite end of the car. Similar to a percentage ratio to where you would weigh all your wheels and figure out your front to rear weight percentage, we'll calculate the different clamping force at one end of the car or the other to help us determine the static bias. Now when we get into dynamic bias, that's when things are going on on the racetrack. 
to where you're making adjustments with your balance bar, things like uh, engine compression and rear gear, or dragging the rear wheels down under deceleration. Now that's dynamic balance. But we use that static balance setup as a starting point to make sure the car handles properly. Because what happens when the balance is off? The car is off entirely. And, you know, even if you have to run a more heavier system, at least the car would be consistent rather than a smaller one where it would fade in and out throughout the race. So you can yeah. keep those laps consistent from start to finish. Yeah, it'll be faster for qualifying, but it won't last. Have to be there at the end. Okay, Carl, now you've kind of decided what piston size you want to go with. Now let's talk a little bit about mounting styles and so forth. Yes, depending on what type of car that you race, whether you're running a Sportsman Modified or a car that runs a uh, spec roll caliper, or if you're running an unlimited rolls category, you might have several different selections about how your caliper is going to mount up and install. If we go back to the categories where, uh, such as the Sportsman Modifieds, where you have to run a factory type cast iron caliper, uh, or say a late model stock that specs out it must be a floating mount caliper. What a floating mount caliper does is exactly that. It floats on a mount pin. As you can see here, this caliper only has a piston on just this one side. So as this piston comes out whenever you push on the brake pedal from hydraulic pressure, you're only going to get piston movement on one side. So it has to be able to float on this mounting pin. So when you're squeezing on the brake pedal, this caliper can move because of piston movement and also to compensate for pad wear. Now, when we look at what we call an opposed mount or a fixed mount caliper, we're going to see a caliper here that has mounting lugs built in, and it's going to have pistons on both sides making pressure and load on brake pads. So we don't have to worry about this caliper being able to float and mount side to side because we're getting piston movement and squeeze from both sides of the caliper, for which a race application is usually a preferred mounting because this gives better and more balanced pad loading on all four corners of the pads, and plus it makes for a stiffer, more rigid mount that gives the driver a more positive, firm feel. And of course, that needs to be uh, centered over the rotor at that point. Yes. Now, with a, with a floating mount caliper, your bracket alignment, you only have to be certain that you have the right distance off of spindle or axle center line so that you get your outside radius of the pad even with the outside radius of the outside diameter of the rotor. Now, when you go to a bracket that's made for a fixed mount caliper, very important that not only that that mount bracket be the right height from axle center line to give you that right outside radius for good pad to rotor alignment, but it also has to be mounted in a way so that the distance from your mount bracket to the distance to your rotor center line is very accurate. You can't have this caliper shifted too far to either side. This is especially important when you're working with a spindle that has a welded caliper bracket because even the best fabricators no matter how precise they are in locating that bracket, when you put heat to steel plate, it's going to move around. Right. So that's why we'll normally use some alignment shims in between the mounting lugs and the bracket plate so that we can center this caliper inside to outside or even slightly change the angle on it to make sure we have very, very square and very centered alignment up over the rotor. That way you have the right clearance and the right release on both pistons on both sides so that we don't see any drag very important so that when you're off the brake pedal that the car can free roll without any drag because if the pads drag the rotors that makes heat and we don't want anything putting heat into the brake system that we don't have to have. Right and of course you know if that caliper sitting off to an angle of the rotor it's using some of the initial clamping force to try to straighten out the bracket again. Yeah it'll twist the bracket and anything that moves around in the brake system causes the driver to feel, feel longer pedal travel and Dalton can tell you Pe extra pedal travel is not necessary. Oh, absolutely not. You just want a firm pedal that's always there, you know, I mean, right at the top. You, you said earlier that you'd want the, the brake pad all the way to the outside of the rotor. What would you say about a scalloped rotor? When you're using rotors such as a scallop cut rotor that doesn't have a full circle diameter outside, you still want to line that outside edge of the pad radius up with the outermost radius of that rotor, what would be on the high side of the scallops. Okay. This is mo most often what we'll hear referred to as a lug mount caliper. The mounting lugs are built right into the caliper itself. Now this particular caliper has some other applications. This is what we call a radial mount caliper. 
This caliper has become especially popular with the sprint car racers that have to attach their caliper to the inboard uh, mount location on the quick change center section. With this mounting system, this bracket bolts to the caliper mount and then the caliper slides down over these studs. Now this makes it easy to get to the mount point, makes it easy to install the brake caliper without losing your shims. Now what we talked about a little earlier with shimming the caliper for alignment side to side with the radial mount, this gives you one more option of shimming and alignment. So if you need, you can stack shims in between the bracket and in between the caliper so that you can get that caliper located precisely off axle center line to get that right pad alignment with the outside of the rotor. And that could be beneficial too, maybe if you've changed spindles or something, but you know, you've got a, uh, a different mount on it that, that may not be able to reach the height you need then you can go with this style and make it work. Yeah, and, that, and that's very important anytime, once again, when you're working with fabricated parts where there's welding and steel. If you're working with a machine bracket, those are no, normally stay more accurate. But anytime you're welding brackets to an axle tube or welding a bracket to a spindle, those things are all going to move around and distort a little bit with the heat. So being able to shim those calipers for real good alignment uh, is going to give you a better response, it's going to give you more even pad wear, and it's going to give you the most efficiency from the pad over squeezing the caliper. It's been great having you on here. We've got to run now, but I hope you'll come back sometime. Thank you, Roger. It's been great to be here. Appreciate it.